Okay, so now I've gone ahead and cleaned up the entire enclosure using acetone, including the sides. I uh, just wanted to, uh, you know, kind of touch base here for a second before we went to the next step. As you can see, lots of detail. Okay, you can actually see the pixelation um, in uh, some of the detail, which tells you how precise the etching actually came out. Uh, the detail around the transistors again and uh, the logos, everything's very sharp, everything looks very good. I'm very happy with the way this came out. Uh, a couple pointers though to make sure that you're on the straight and narrow with this. You don't want to over etch because if you leave it in the etchant too long what happens is it begins to underflow and the etchant will actually go underneath uh, the areas that you don't want it to go and it'll begin to uh, um, blur the image that you want. So keep it at about 10 minutes. Uh, make sure your etchant's up at room temperature, a little bit warmer. Um, the other thing to keep note is that you never want to go ahead and use any steel wool on this after you've etched it or sand it in any way. And the reason why is because the areas that have been etched that you see in black, that black is not from the toner, it's not from paint, it's not from anything. That black is actually the oxidation of the aluminum and it's a permanent part of that aluminum and you don't want to lose that oxidation. That gives us the, the nice contrast that you see. If you make the mistake of actually going back and sanding this or um, you know using a piece of steel wool, you can actually feel the etching in here. It's actually etched into the aluminum. Um, it's a depression and the etched areas are oxidized and that oxidation is what gives it that dark, nice, contrasty color. And if you go ahead and try to sand this to shine it up a little bit, you're going to remove that oxidation and uh, ruin the image that you've taken all this time to create. So make sure that you don't uh, polish or don't uh, you know, steel wool the enclosure at this point. Now the sides, you could do that if you want to polish up the sides. Any areas that don't have any etching, that would be fine. And so the next step is, of course, to go ahead and start to lay out the drilling and... Uh, and uh, finish off the enclosure. So here we are at the workbench. Uh, what we want to do now is go ahead and lay out the holes that we want to drill. And so we have our enclosure um, and uh, it's ready to go. The things that you're going to need for this, obviously you're going to need the components that you're going to insert in the holes. Need some kind of scale so that we can lay out exactly where we want the holes on the enclosure. Uh, maybe a pencil to lightly mark where the holes will go. So the procedure is going to go something like this. Once we lay out the positions of the holes on the enclosure, then we're going to use a center punch and the center punch is going to uh, put a small indentation at the point where we want to have the holes. Then we're going to drill a pilot hole, which is a small hole to begin all of the holes with. Make sure you use a drill bit that's relatively small. Um, and then once the pilot hole is, is then created on all the holes, we're going to go back and drill them out to the proper diameter. So what I've done here is I've laid out the drill bits that I need for the final hole diameter. So what we have here is the power connector, we have the foot switch, we have the input and output um, quarter inch uh, uh, jacks, and then we have the, the one of three potentiometers that we're going to need. And so what I did was I took the nuts off, and then I took the drill bits that I have to, to make sure that they're just slightly larger than the diameter that we need to um, cut the final hole. So you can see that this drill bit is good for both um, the power switch and uh, the foot switch. Then I have this drill bit here that is uh, the, the right size for uh, the quarter inch connector. And then finally uh, this last drill bit here, well second to last, is the uh, for the potentiometer. And finally, probably one of the most critical ones is the little LED clip because that has a pretty tight tolerance so you're going to have to find a drill bit that matches the diameter of that pretty closely. Remember that you're going to drill that hole and then you're going to insert the LED from underneath and it's got to snap in snugly. And so we're going to do that of course after we lay the thing out and then drill the pilot hole. So the next step really is to go ahead and measure out uh, where we want uh, the holes to be drilled.
Okay, so now with everything measured out and marked, I'm going to go ahead and use the center punch tool and uh, center punch uh, where I want the holes, and then we're going to go ahead and drill pilot holes. So to use the center punch, you just simply, it's spring-loaded, you just simply center it on uh, where you want the hole, and you press down till it clicks. And that's it. And so it puts a little dimple in the aluminum, and that dimple is where the drill bit will catch, and uh, it'll drill that hole much easier than without the center punch. If you don't have a center punch, you can use a nail, small nail, and just gently hit it with the hammer. I like the center punch because it's just a cheap and easy way to locate the holes that you want drilled. So we just go ahead and simply get these all uh, center punched here and we'll be ready to drill out the pilot holes. And that's it. Okay, so now we have the, uh, the drill press set up. I've got the pilot uh, bit in there. Um, you know, if you don't have a drill press, that's okay. You can use a hand drill. Uh, it's just a little bit more convenient for me because I have one of these. Um, but a hand drill will work just fine in the same situation. Uh, so I'm going to turn on the press, and we're just going to go ahead and drill out the pilot holes based on where we use the center punch. And you simply just go ahead and drill these out gently. It makes the rest of the drilling go a lot easier if you do use a pilot hole first. There's less chance for your drill bit to wander and so forth. It'll give you a nice clean and perfectly located hole. So with the pilot holes all drilled now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, drill the final holes. I'm going to start with the potentiometer drill bit, so double check the size of your drill bit before you start going at it because if you take too much off, well it's kind of hard to, uh, to put it back on. So uh, right now, uh, I'm going to just go ahead and begin. Uh, when I use the larger drill bits, I like to use put, a, put just maybe a little bit of grease on the end of it. Um, so that it cuts easier and it's easier on the drill bit. Uh, it'll last longer, it'll make your cut better. Uh, so again, if you're using a hand bit or a hand drill, you can do the same thing. So we'll just go ahead and turn this on and notice that it self-centers right away. That's what the pilot hole is all about. So we'll go ahead and just gently drill this one out. Do it nice and evenly and gently so that the drill bit doesn't heat up. And so there you go. We've got those three uh, holes drilled and we're going to go ahead and change bits and move on to all the other holes until we're done. Now that the enclosure is all drilled out, it's probably a good time to uh, double check to make sure that all the hole sizes are correct and everything looks uh, as it should be before we venture back and start to assemble. All right, so we can uh, try out um, our foot switch. Looks like that worked out okay. Uh, our power connector here slides in very well. Our potentiometer um, should fit in the holes, and those look correct. Um, our connector on the side here, as you can see, that's the correct size as well. And finally, our LED hole, which is right above um, the foot switch and that clips in quite nicely and snugly. And so, what you could do is if you have a little bit of grease on there from, from the drill bit, you can use a little rubbing alcohol or some little bit of degreaser to degrease uh, all the holes and uh, essentially we're done with the machining portion of uh, the assembly and 
we can go ahead and final assemble the pedal now. 